It's my privilege to be here. I've been associated with uh, Hatch every session for a while now. Uh, presented at uh, PHP in the cloud and a couple of other events of HASD. So my name is Janaki Ram. Uh, I don't have a slide. This is a very interactive session. I'm not going to uh, take any marketing pitch or anything. This is going to be extremely interactive. Uh, I'm just making it over the slide at the time. Okay, this is okay. I'm going to stand here. Actually, get this here. No, no, this is good. This is good. So my name is Janaki Ram. Um, before I started off on my own, I was with Amazon Web Services for about a year. And prior to that, I was with uh, Microsoft Corporation uh, for about 11 years. Um, I've been involved in cloud-related stuff for about four years now. Uh, worked on Windows Azure, worked on Amazon Web Services, and now I run an initiative called Get Cloud Ready, where uh, I primarily help individuals and ISVs to uh, develop applications and refactor applications for the cloud. So uh, before I get started and walk you through some, some scenarios and use cases, let me take a quick poll. How many of you are familiar with Amazon Web Services? Um, how many of you are attending a cloud-related session or hearing about cloud or have never done anything on AWS? OK, uh, have you have you deployed a server on AWS? How many of you? OK, great, OK. So this assumes that you are familiar with Amazon Web Services. Uh, I'm not going to do uh, uh, an intro to AWS, but given the fact that there are more number of people who are new to AWS, I might just give you some background. Uh, and then I'll, I'll actually make you uh, appreciate the the value of uh, cloud formation. So, uh, to quickly walk you through AWS and, and the current landscape, what is actually happening in this space. So, uh, cloud has certainly changed the way resources are being provisioned, resources are being dealt with, uh, and cloud is all about automation, right? What typically takes to set up a, a stack on a physical piece of hardware will be reduced to a few minutes when it comes to uh, cloud, right? So cloud is extremely powerful because of the automation capabilities. And there is a new concept that's being evolved, which is called DevOps. How many of you have heard this term called DevOps? OK, again, three, four of you. So the, the, the most interesting part of cloud is the cloud turns developers to be administrators and administrators to be developers. When it comes to cloud, you can't say uh, you are a developer and you don't care about firewalls, load balancers, <coughs> Uh, server sizing, capacity planning. You, as a developer, you still need to understand some of these techniques. And the best thing is you'll be able to write code to to provision most of this stuff. So that's the power of uh, cloud, and that actually creates a new job function in the environment, uh, which is called DevOps, where administrators become partial developers and developers become partial administrators. Right? Uh, imagine writing code to set up a load balancer, to set up a firewall, creating four different servers in a web form, adding them to the uh, load balancer, then creating a master-slave database cluster, and pointing them to your app servers, and, and completely declaring this whole stuff uh, in code, and then executing the code to set up the complete virtual data center. So if you carefully analyze this, you have developers trying to administer the stuff through the code. So those individuals who are capable of writing infrastructure code and treating data center as a programmable environment are the new DevOps pro professionals. They are the developer operations professionals. They do what administrators do, but they are much more cutting edge because they actually script it and code it. Right. So this has fundamentally changed the landscape. This has uh, turned into uh, a new revolution in IT operations and deployment uh, world because today it's all about uh, repeatability, right? You can't just assume things will work. You may want to create a web form, a complete high availability architecture and topology, and you should be able to replicate it multiple times. So with, with that concept, uh, there are new uh, tools like Ops Code Chef and Puppet Actually, there is a parallel session happening on Chef. So all these techniques evolved primarily to uh, manage and help you manage the configuration at runtime. So 
uh, what I will do is uh, I'll quickly walk you through a scenario and then I will I will show you uh, what we are going to do with cloud formation so this is this is basically the AWS console and because some of you are new I will spend exactly five minutes uh, walking you through the 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 nuts and bolts of Amazon Web Services and make you appreciate the value of cloud and then we'll move to the next phase of uh, cloud formation and see what it can do for us okay let me ask you uh, if I am running a website on my local host on uh, vamp or MAMP, how long does it take for you to to go live with a with a live domain and and take it beyond your local host to the public world how long does it take sorry three days okay uh, any more any more uh, that that's a simple application uh, it's a lamp application depends on the web hosting provider right the turnaround time could be anywhere from 24 hours to 48 hours to even 72 hours that's a maximum right okay so so I, I basically have a, a local host application that I am running and what I want to do is to go live um, with the same application on the cloud so let me walk you through what it takes to to basically launch this so Amazon Web Services is, is primarily the cloud computing environment that comes with fundamental building blocks of, uh, of, of doing anything meaningful for your application. So essentially today when you are going live, uh, you need to deal with a bunch of building blocks. Definitely you need compute, you need servers that, has, that have uh, tremendous power, you need massive storage for durability and uh, for scalability, then you need a little bit of networking in terms of firewall, load balancers and so on then you need databases. So all these four are the essential building blocks for developing and deploying applications, right? So traditionally, you go ahead and procure them, you set up physical machines, you install the stack. Um, on cloud, these are available, these building blocks are available to you uh, in the form of pay-as-you-go model, right? So uh, EC2 or uh, Amazon Elastic Compute Cloud is primarily a flexible elastic compute environment that's available to you, right? So you can launch a server and you can scale up or you can scale out your application. So what does it take to launch uh, a simple server? So let me launch a plain vanilla Linux box and then uh, set up LAMP stack and quickly go live with my application. So I'm going to first show you the manual way and then we're going to automate the same process through cloud formation. So uh, I'm not sure if this is visible. Is this visible? Okay, great. So, so uh, here you, you have you know, multiple uh, varieties of operating system choices. So Amazon has a, a distribution customized for the cloud called the Amazon Linux AMI. So I'm going to select that. Uh, and in the next step, I'm going to choose the configuration. So if you are able to read this, uh, there are multiple configurations. For example, the entry level configuration is called a micro tier, which comes with a burst compute capacity up to two ECUs, which is two CPUs roughly. And you can go all the way up to 20 ECUs with eight core siege and uh, seven GB or even 70 GB of RAM. So you have a variety of configuration choices that are available. Let me stick to the entry level uh, configuration and I can launch multiple instances at the same time, but I'm going to keep them as one. And then uh, you can safely skip this. And here, let me just call this the LAMP server. So I'll, I'll create this. And then uh, I need an SSH key to log into my server because uh, sending the username and password in clear text is not an option, particularly when you're on the public facing internet. So there is a private key that's available to me. And I'm going to choose that. And then I'm going to configure a firewall for this server. So. I'm going to choose HTTP and let the traffic come from any IP address. I'm going to add that. Then I'm going to open up uh, SSH port. So basically I'm configuring a firewall for my server or I could choose one of the existing firewalls which are pre-configured. So I'm going to choose that. And then I'm going to finally review this whole thing and click on launch. So this process has uh, essentially launched a plain vanilla CentOS based Linux box, right? So in, in a few seconds, uh, this server would be available to us. Now, meanwhile, what I'm going to do is to bring up uh, a very simple script that I have already saved.
okay so um, so this is still pending it should take about 30 seconds for this box to come up and to become available i don't think i'm walking you through aws 101 but only when you see the manual operations uh, you'll be able to appreciate the automation part of it so now i basically uh, grab this public ip address and let's open uh, another browser instance Obviously, this is not going to show up anything because we are not running a web server, we are not doing anything meaningful in that. So now what I am going to do is uh, you know, SSH into my instance. And I am going to log in as EC2 user. So this will get me into my uh, box, right? So this is the beauty. now. I quickly become a root user and this is my box okay it took us less than 40 seconds to bring up our first server then um, I'm going to run uh, a mundane script to get us the lamp stack completely set up so I'm going to pull it from the M repository that Amazon internally maintains so it's extremely fast um, in, 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 in few seconds uh, you would actually see that the entire lamp stack is going to be up and running then I run a bunch of other commands to configure the lamp so this is going to you now make sure that my uh, Apache MySQL PHP is set up the right way then I'm going to basically pull the latest uh, build of my source code either from an SVN or from uh, S3 so you know I have already up uploaded my uh, latest build of the website there I also get a database dump into my box Right, so now I have uh, what I actually need. I'm you're not able to see this, but there is a website.zip and then there is db.sql. So now uh, I go ahead and unzip my website into. Okay, there's a typo here. Where am I going wrong here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. So uh, I did that. Then I'm going to quickly import my uh, database into MySQL. Okay. And now I come back to the browser and do a refresh. Uh, and there we go. So that's our LAMP website uh, that has gone live. And this whole process has taken less than two minutes, right? From the time you launch the server till you have gone live. So uh, in this process, we have gone through a series of steps. We have actually uh, launched a server, we configured a firewall, we attached a, a private key to it, and then we SSH and ran a lot of script, right? So. Uh, let's say you got to do this across multiple regions, multiple data centers in a repeated form and uh, you don't want to really do it manually because when you are at attempting anything manual, uh, the chances of making an error is far more higher, right? So how about uh, achieving the same thing through some kind of a declarative uh, form where you are going to basically define your, uh, your cooking recipe and then just publish it and get the same stack up and running, right? So this ability of automating and declaring your stack in, in plain English is what is called as cloud formation. So cloud formation is uh, a runtime environment on AWS that lets you define the stack, that lets you define your entire configuration uh, and your server orchestration in plain English. And when you actually publish that, uh, the same effect that we achieve now can be completely automated, right? So that's exactly what is called as cloud formation. So let me um, show you one of the very, very simple scripts here. In fact, uh, let, me, let me start creating a simple a 
simple JSON file uh, on my desktop. So, what does it take to launch a server uh, automatically? As in, instead of really going to the manual stuff and the manual process of uh, clicking through it, uh, how about declaring the whole thing? By the way, when it comes to uh, Amazon Web Services, there are multiple ways of achieving the same thing. Basically, there is uh, AWS control plane and then there is an API that is exposed by Amazon Web Services which is very very popular and multiple tools leverage this API. There are command line tools that, that you can actually use or you could also write program uh, in, in any, any language of your choice all the way from uh, Java to C Sharp to VB or even you can script it using Ruby or Bash and so on. Uh, but all those require uh, some kind of scripting, programming and dealing with the API. This is the first time that Amazon has come out with something which is very similar to a chef recipe, but this is more towards orchestrating the servers than configuration. Cloud formation is uh, not a replacement to chef or puppet. It's more of a complementary tool or a technology that works really well with the, the chefs and the puppets of the world. So uh, chef and puppet are essentially meant for configuration of your software after the server comes up, whereas the cloud formation is more about uh, orchestrating your cloud resources and, and basically provisioning your cloud resources. And once cloud formation sets up your plain vanilla machines, it can bootstrap Chef and download the cookbooks and the recipes and, and can actually execute whatever is required. But this is a level above uh, the chefs and the puppets of the world, right? How many of you are familiar with the Chef cookbooks and the recipes? Anyone? Okay, just a few. So. So let's get started. Let me uh, walk you through what it takes to, to basically declare uh, the launch of a server or the configuration of a server and then use CloudFormation to achieve the same uh, scope that we have. So let me start with this. So I'm going to create um, the very first So uh, cloud formation is, is primarily a JSON file. It is extremely simple to get started. So it just consists of a variety of name value pairs uh, completely uh, serialized in the JSON format. So it starts with a, a very first line where you define the template format version. And this template format version is uh, based on a specific date. So currently we are using the version uh, that is 2010.0909. After that, you can give uh, a simple description, which is going to uh, define the description of this template. So basically, a template is more like the decorative format, and from the template, you can create multiple stacks. A stack is a live implementation of a template. So now, uh, we, we have the very basic skeleton here and this can have uh, multiple resources that can be defined. So these resources are going to be, uh, you know, for example, we are going to define uh, an EC2 instance. So it starts with this and then we can actually start explaining multiple resources here. For example, EC2 instance is uh, based on type so let's define the type. Uh, don't bother much as I type, uh, you're going to get a lot of clarity, but once you understand what is, how a stack or a template is created, you'll be able to relate to a lot of things. So for now, I'm basically uh, creating the simplest cloud formation template to launch one server. So I'm going to create an EC2 uh, instance type. So that's the type that we're going to launch, the cloud resource. But the instance in itself requires multiple properties. For example, you need to define uh, what is the AMI type, what is the key that you are using, what is the firewall configuration, and uh, what is the instance type. Are you launching a micro instance or a large instance and so on. So you need to explain a lot many details when it comes to a cloud resource. So uh, here we, we start another uh, simple snippet where uh, we are going to define the <coughs> properties, okay? And within the properties, I'm going to uh, define the key name of my uh, private key, right? So 
then I'm going to define the instance type. Okay, let's call this the T1 micro, which is a which is an internal name of the micro instance that AWS gives you. Then of course we need uh, the image ID, which is the Amazon machine image. So basically, when you are launching any machine, uh, any uh, instance on uh, AWS, it has an associated uh, AMI ID. So this is the AMI ID. So let me uh, grab the same AMI ID and put that here. Oops. Let me get it from a better place. Uh, this is not the best way to copy. So I'm going to grab the same, uh, oops. Okay, so this is the AMI ID that we are trying to launch. Uh, it's kind of unfortunate that we had to go through this step to get the AMI ID. So uh, then we are going to define the security group, which is the firewall related to uh, this server. So I'm going to add uh, another name value pair. This time it's actually... So, so basically, uh, this, is the, this is the basic format uh, or the or the cloud formation template that we have just created now i want to spend some time uh, analyzing what we have typed here so these two are more like the mandatory requirements and after that you start explaining and articulating your cloud resources so it starts with resources and within that we put ec2 instance which is mapped to uh, a resource of the namespace uh, for example if you're adding a load balancer that would be aws ec2 elastic load balancer or if you're adding an elastic block store uh, the type will change here and once you define this we are going to have uh, multiple attributes that will uh, explain the resource better for example what do you require to launch an instance you require the private key you require the instance type you require the image id then you require the firewall that's associated with it so this is the simplest simplest uh, very first uh, cloud formation template that we have just created right now we'll, we'll save this and then come back to aws uh, management console and go to the cloud formation tab by the way if this process is not very intuitive as in uh, obviously when you're automating you never want to deal with the gui or the browser there are command line tools for you to launch uh, the same template from the command line but to keep this simple and walk you through the conventional model of uh, cloud formation i will use this wizard so now uh, let me let me call this linux and i'm going to upload a template file so uh, this is the template that we just created and i can also give uh, advanced options related to this for example i can raise a notification which will tell me whether uh, the stack has been successfully created or not because some of the stacks are extremely complex and long running if you are setting up a load balancer and if you are setting up a cluster that might run into a few minutes and you don't want to stare at this so you can associate this with uh, a notification mechanism within aws called sns and you can actually get a mail or a or, a, or an sms the moment this uh, process is completed now during the uh, process there may be a failure in which case you can roll back the entire stack for example in a transactional mode uh, you might want to roll back and reverse the entire operation all the way from creating a firewall to creating a new EBS volume load balancer the moment something goes wrong in your stack the whole stack gets reversed right so that's the option here roll back on failure and you can also define a, a timeout in seconds so this is going to uh, basically oh sorry this is in minutes and you can basically uh, tell how long the stack can uh, you know execute and when does it gracefully uh, exit so that's the advanced options here and then this is going to parse our simple template that we have created and it also uploads this to a location that is centrally available to uh, AWS so uh, the, the simple 
uh, stuff that we created here is now available and it's being uploaded to one of the cloud storage locations. So now I'm going to click on continue. So the moment I click on continue, it's going to pass everything and uh, starts the creation of the stack. Right. So while this is happening, uh, let's come back to the EC2 console and do a refresh. And if, if, if that has kicked off the process, you would actually notice that uh, there is a new server that's going to be created for us. Sure. So, so the, the question is, uh, this is based on JSON, can we have any other format? Yep, thanks. Uh, no, uh, this, is, this is actually uh, a JSON standard. You can't really use XML or you can't use any other format because the runtime that's going to pass the CloudFormation template is, is designed to understand only JSON. Yes, yes, you can set up command line tool for, uh, tools for the same thing. So let's see if we are uh, back in action here. Okay, so uh, we will review the uh, options here and then when we continue, this is going to kick off the whole orchestration process and if you look at the events here, it's going to tell us what is what is going on behind the scenes of the cloud formation. So currently the Linux EC2 instance is being created and while this is happening, we can go back to uh, the EC2 console and do a refresh. So here you'll see that there's a new server that's being provisioned, right? So this is coming from uh, the same JSON uh, that we just created. So now this should be done. So here you'll also see the status create in progress. The moment this turns green, uh, it's an indication that the stack has been implemented successfully. This will also turn red in which case it's going to get rolled back. And, and resets the whole configuration. It's going to undo everything that it has done as a part of the stack. Okay, so now uh, this is complete. So this turns green. So uh, this is one of the simplest uh, AWS uh, cloud formation template that you could create. But next, uh, what I want to show you is slightly more complex uh, template to automate the installation of WordPress. So this has uh, you know, multiple things. So at a very high level, any CloudFormation template will have parameters, mappings, resources, and outputs. So, so these are the various sections that you can put in a, in a specific uh, CloudFormation template. So parameters are the dynamic parameters. For example, you don't want to hard code uh, any of the instance types but you want to prompt the user so when you create a parameter and when you are executing the stack it's going to ask you for the input values and you can also define a set of valid uh, choices by creating the appropriate values here uh, similarly we'll prompt the user for the db root password and you'll actually see there is something called a no echo is equal to true so this is an indication that what you're prompting the user is a password and it shouldn't be shown on the screen. So when we're creating the WordPress stack, we are primarily asking for the instance type and then we are asking for the db root password. 
So that's about the parameters. Then there is another section called mappings where you're actually going to uh, pick up from an existing map. Okay, this is, this is a lookup kind of a thing where when you are executing this script across multiple regions of Amazon Web Services, this is going to map to multiple machine images. So you can take the same script and run it across eight different uh, regions of Amazon Web Services. And when you are executing a specific region, this is the mapping that it's going to use. Similarly, the architectural details of every instance type also comes from the mapping. So mappings is primarily an array of values uh, that you can look up and it's almost like a drop down when it uh, passes during the interface uh, interpretation. So once you create the mappings, then you go ahead and create resources. So here, uh, we're also creating a user. Are you familiar with the concept called IAM, Identity and, uh, uh, Identity and Authentication Management? Particularly in AWS where you can create an enterprise level account and you can have multiple sub accounts. So what we are doing here is we are uh, creating an identity and access management user only to uh, access the uh, cloud formation metadata. So we create that user and then we use his credentials of the access key and the secret key to log on to uh, the web server and automatically install uh, you know, the, the LAMP stack that's required. And then it can also pull the latest version of WordPress from the location. So it's going to get this and automatically expand into the W3 HTML directory. And then it's going to create a, a very simple script, which is to create the WordPress database. And it's going to get the details that we entered during the setup. So now you'll actually see there is uh, something called uh, ref, okay, ref db root password. So this is the db root password that would have prompted the user to enter during the execution and that's going to be replaced here. So this is a specific uh, notation that's being used within CloudFormation where uh, you're dynamically replacing this value with whatever the user has entered. And then this is primarily the WP config file that, that's going to be created. And finally, uh, it's also going to make sure that the, the HTTPD, MySQL, uh, D and SendMail services are being started automatically. Uh, and it, it basically runs all the script to, to basically run uh, the MySQL commands to create the database and to execute the database script. So finally, this is the uh, firewall configuration that's being again described declaratively within the template. So we are opening port 80 for this. And uh, this is a CIDR notation where the traffic can come from any IP address. And finally, the output section of this template will, will join the uh, web server public DNS name and finally gives you the uh, final URL of the WordPress website. So let's go ahead and execute this. So I'm going to create a new stack and let me give the name of the stack as WP and I'm going to upload this, uh, the WP.json. Okay, in the next step, it's going to parse all the details uh, that we have asked. So here, as you see, there is a DB root password and instance type. So this is primarily coming from the parameter section uh, that we have defined here. So here, the instance type is a parameter. Default is M1 small, that's what you would uh, see here. The DB root password uh, is also being given here with no echo. So let me change these parameters. Let me change this to a T1 micro. And because we are creating an IAM user, I also acknowledge that I'm going to give access to this guy uh, and click on continue. So this is going to uh, provision a plain vanilla LAMP server and then download WordPress build from the wordpress.com site and automatically configure everything that we require. So if you keep an eye on the events tab, uh, this will take a while because it's going to uh, do a lot of stuff all the way from creating a plain vanilla server to creating uh, uh, you know multiple uh, firewall configurations and also downloading the latest build of WordPress. So it, it does whatever we are supposed to do to set up WordPress manually. Uh, so in about uh, two and a half, three minutes, we'll actually notice that the, the entire WordPress stack is up and running. So while this is happening, uh, any questions? 
So, uh, good question. I think uh, I, I partially answered this before you joined it. So, so basically, the fundamental difference between cloud formation and puppet chef is puppet and chef are more like conservation management tools. Right? That is, uh, that is much more useful after you wake up the server live and you start to download the. You know, my my point was that I mean, a combination of those puppet with uh, a bunch yeah. of command line tools that will start the machine for me. Right. Uh, I can achieve almost the same functionality. <coughs> So uh, the number one reason is if you are an Amazon customer and you have uh, a massive investment going to AWS, you are sure you are never going to move away from AWS and you need a dynamic configuration By the way, you can actually you can, you can, uh, integrate Chef and Puppet with CloudFormation. For example, just like I am bootstrapping WordPress, I can bootstrap Chef, Chef Solo and I can point it to the uh, cookbooks, it can download and can perform exactly the same. But to bootstrap Chef, I need an external environment even before I, I get up to that point, and that is cloud formation. Okay. There are, there are that like. Of course, but this is, this is an official Amazon flavor of the same, uh, and this is meant for customers who are going to be married to AWS. It doesn't give you the platform uh, agnostic advantage, but then if you have already massively invested in AWS, this makes it further easy. And uh, there are going to be many uh, features coming into it, as in, see, the inherent capabilities of adding an elastic block store or creating an elastic IP is going to be very hard with third-party tools because they are not aware of certain uh, certain nitty gritties of dealing with AWS specific resources, but cloud formation is completely aware of those. For example, have you played with AWS? You are familiar with? Okay, so you you know EBS, right? So in the same declaration, I can actually block, uh, let's say, one TB of uh, Elastic Block Store, and I can add it to my instance and mount it, create a mount point, and dump my database log files onto that while declaring the stack. Okay, so th that's a kind of integration it has. But I totally agree, it's not very unique, as in you can achieve the same effect, same impact by, by using Chef and even Ruby scripts. But this is more like an official Amazon flavor of partial DevOps. Okay, so um, hopefully we are done with the WordPress formation now. So yeah, creation is complete. And, and now if we come back to the management console and uh, look at this, so we have a new server that's up and running, and let's grab this public DNS. Wow, it, it, hasn't, it hasn't really deployed WordPress yet. Uh, no, it actually dumps it in the root, because if we look at the script, uh, it is in the root, right? Oh, okay, okay. okay. Let's also try this. You're right. Cool. So, um, okay. My my guess was we have dumped this into. Yeah, so, so when you obviously expand WordPress.zip, it, it dumps it into WordPress, right? So, so that, was, that was essentially the uh, script for the WordPress deployment. Uh, I know this is like scratching the surface. It has uh, many more use cases. In fact, I have uh, one more uh, CloudFormation template that I'm working on where you basically get the same e-commerce portal that I have uh, run earlier, automate the whole stuff. But uh, somehow in the last minute, I couldn't really get that done. But you can, you can pretty much automate everything that requires manual intervention and you can, uh, it's almost like baking versus cooking. 
So according to Amazon, <laughs> chef is more like uh, cooking because when they get the proportions uh, slightly different. Whereas uh, when it comes to cloud formation, it's almost like baking because you cannot go like it's, it's the proportions of the ingredients uh, of your uh, recipe are like very accurate. It's almost like baking. If you are dealing with chef, it's almost like cooking because the proportions may vary. So you get more accuracy when you are using cloud formation. Um, I don't work for Amazon, but that's what I used to say when I was working for Amazon. Okay, so uh, I don't have uh, much time, but questions, yeah. So, do you need like to have Absolutely. Anything. Uh, as long as you. Yeah, so, so the question is, uh, can I use Ubuntu instead of CentOS? Actually, it depends on the uh, AMI ID. You can pick up an AMI that belongs to Ubuntu, and you could pretty much repeat the same stuff. Anything, anything uh, that the OS can understand can go into that. Yeah. Does this integrate with Route 53? Absolutely. Uh, in the resources section, you can actually create a new zone and you can start registering your domains there. Mm -hmm. So is the question installing the certificate related to SSL? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Mm -hmm. So, so the 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 question is, uh, can you also uh, associate the certificate? to a specific domain during the cloud formation template i'm not too sure but my understanding is uh, it has to be done after the instance completely comes up and then you have to actually execute the route 53 command line tools to do that it, absolutely absolutely so what you can do is uh, as a part of the installation for example here instead of downloading uh, the wordpress binaries you would actually download the route 53 command line tools set them up, update the environment variables, and execute that specific command, which will map your uh, certificate. Mm -hmm. You can invoke that. Yeah. Any more questions? Mm -hmm. So your question is, okay, there's a last one. Uh, the question is, how do you build an Amazon stale environment in your own premises? Uh, there are multiple things. You can actually set up a private cloud either based on Eucalyptus or CloudStack or OpenStack uh, and emulate pretty much a lot of things that Amazon gives you. But let me tell you, Amazon is far ahead in the game. Uh, getting all those capabilities within your premises is very difficult to achieve, but you can emulate uh, most of the core capabilities through either Eucalyptus or CloudStack or OpenStack. Right, so, so thanks, thanks for attending the session. I'm around uh, for any discussion. Thank you.